Hello everyone, I am Bahar Hutan. I am a PhD student at the Mallardalen University and today I am presenting the paper Synthesizing Schedules to Improve Quality of Service of Best Depot Traffic in TSN Networks. So this is how the outline of my today's presentation will be. I am going to first give a short introduction to time-sensitive networking and time over shaper mechanism in these standards. Then I'm going to present the existing scheduling constraints for scheduled traffic classes in time-sensitive networking. And then I'm going to present the approaches to optimize the schedules generated based on, uh, subject to the given constraints. After that, I'm going to present our proposed system model, our evaluation setup, and uh, present our results and conclude the presentation. Time-sensitive networking has defined the set of mechanisms on top of existing Ethernet standards, which enable connecting diverse types of applications to the same cable network. So, as can be seen in this example, we might have robot controllers, sensor, diagnosis and maintenance stations in a factory, and time-sensitive networking enable all these applications to communicate with each other through the same cable network with real-time guarantees. And time over shaper mechanism is one of the mechanisms defined by the TSN task group to ensure the deterministic transmission of the highest priority traffic, which usually holds the hard real-time traffic. One of the enhancements that is made by TSN to the conventional Ethernet frame are extra 4 bytes of data added to the frame header. This extra 4 byte holds a 3-bit priority code point or PCP value. The PCP value specifies the priority which the data being transmitted in the frame belongs to. And we use this PCP value to uh, forward this data through dedicated queues at each egress port of a TSN switch. So the architecture as illustrated in this slide exists as each egress port of a TSN switch. Uh, so, for simplicity, we only show four of these queues at the egress port of a TSN switch. Uh, and as can be seen, we have dedicated queues for four of the traffics, scheduled traffic, which is the highest priority with uh, priority of seven, uh, class ABBA and class ABBB, and the lowest priority best default class. And we have a gate control list with time-stamped gate states inside it that drive the gates to uh, allocate the bandwidth of the link connected to the egress port to each of the uh, queues as illustrated. And let's clarify this in an example. In this example, we have three different streams of different priorities generated by separate traffic generators and routed through the same switches to the same destination. And as can be seen, port 3 of switch 1 and port 1 of switch 2 are, have the role of egress port. So we need to configure the gate control list at each of these ports to make sure that sufficient bandwidth is allocated to the scheduled traffic to pass. And as a conventional approach, we leave the rest of the bandwidth to the lower priority traffic than ST Therefore, class AVB is sent them to using the credit-based shaper, and after that, the less rest of the bandwidth is left for best default traffic to pass. We can see that here we are facing with a problem resembling bin packing optimization problem, in which we try to find the offsets of the frames on each link in their path, and based on the transmission time of the frame on each of the links, we uh, determine time slots uh, to configure at each gate control list. In case of small networks, we can just draw the trace on paper, uh, but if the networks get, uh, network gets big or the traffic grows, we can expect to have a more difficult uh, problem to solve. Therefore, uh, in the majority of the previous works, uh, constraint-based optimization approach has been utilized and we, same as the existing works, prefer to use this approach. And based on some constraints, which we are going to introduce in the coming slides, we solve the problem. Here are the six constraints, frame constraint, deadline constraint, stream constraint, link constraint, stream isolation constraint, and frame isolation constraint. And let's see how the frame stream 
deadline constraints work in one example. So in this example, we have a stream of type ST with period of three time units. The size of the frame, uh, the stream equals to one full frame size and it's rotated from link one to link two and then link three. So we need to find the switch one's port one gate states and switch two's port one gate states for this frame. So the offset value of this frame based on the frame constraint should be between some time between its current activation time and uh, the offset plus its transmission time on the link should be less than its next period activation time. As we can see here, the valid range of the uh, frame A uh, should not exceed its next period activation. Then, uh, in order to satisfy the stream constraint, we need to make sure that the offset of the frame at its uh, subsequent hop is more than the offset at the previous hop plus its transmission time and so on up to the final link and this was the stream constraint and for deadline constraint we need to make sure that the offset plus transmission time at the last hop of the frame does not exceed the maximum allowed end-to-end -end delay of the frame and as seen in this orange by these orange arrows the valid ranges of offset are satisfied by the frame, stream, and deadline constraints. So here we come to the link constraint. For the link constraint, I'm going to need a more complicated example with two streams. So both of these streams are of type SD with the highest priority, but the period of stream one is three time units. However, the period of stream two is six time units. Both of them uh, have the size equal to one full frame size. Frame uh, A, which belongs to stream 1, is being transmitted from ES1 to ES3 and passes through link 1, link 3, and link 5. Uh, frame B, which belongs to stream 2, is going to be transmitted from ES2 and passed through link 2, link 3, and link 4 and re uh, received at ES4. And to schedule these two frames, I'm going to implicitly consider the first uh, explained constraints, frame, uh, stream, and deadline constraints. So we can see that these two streams have different periods. Therefore, as explained earlier, we have different schedule window sizes. For link one, we can see since it's only going to transmit frame A, uh, it has the size of three time units, however link 2 is going to transmit uh, frame B and its uh, schedule size is equals to frame B's period which is six time units. But this is different for link 3 since we are going to calculate the uh, schedule uh, window size of link 3 by a least common multiple of the periods of frame A and frame B which is going to be six time units. Therefore, we are going to have two frame instances of frame A scheduled on link three. So if we assume that both of these frames are going to start their transmissions at time zero, we can simply put them on the link at time zero. And since these are two separate links, there is going to be no overlapping on them. Therefore, we can simply start the transmission of frame A and frame B on time zero. But this is different for link three because uh, we can expect the overlapping, overlapping of these uh, two frames on this link. Let's assume that based on the three uh, first constraints, frame A is going to be scheduled as shown here and the grade uh, frame A on link 3 is showing the second instance of frame A, schedule of which is calculated by adding up, its, uh, adding up the period of frame A to the offset of the first instance of frame A. So considering this, we can see the valid ranges of frame A by the green arrows. And here is when the link constraint comes into play when we want to find the schedule of frame B on the link 3 and link 4. 
because uh, we need to find the offset of frame B at the at its second and last hop in a way that it won't overlap with the already allocated time slots for each instance of frame A on link 3. So if we assume that we are going to uh, schedule the next hop, uh, the frame B at its next hop on link 3 just before the transmission of the grade frame A, which is the second, second instance of frame A, then we have a short range to transmit frame B. However, since it's transmitted before its deadline, which is the next period activation, it's satisfiable. Uh, however, we can see that here we have a very large end-to-end -end delay and response time for frame B. And therefore, the stream isolation constraint uh, helps us to shorten the end-to-end -end delay calculated for frame B by just isolating the streams from each other in a way that we push the offset of the frame B at its first hop uh, to some time after finishing the transmission of frame A at its last hop. And as seen in this example, the offset of frame B is pushed to some time later after we have finished the transmission of the stream 1 uh, and the end-to-end -end delay of stream 2 has been decreased as well. And here we see an overview of all the constraints and their mathematical expressions which we covered by examples in the previous slides. Uh, the frame isolation constraint was not applicable to our uh, examples because we were considering the size of the streams to be equal to full frame size. Therefore, we just uh, considering stream isolation was equivalent to the frame isolation constraint. So given the examples for the constraints, we can see that we naturally tend to minimize the offsets and count the value of offset from time zero. Uh, this has happened in majority of the previous works and they all consider minimization of the offsets, which might be due to the fact that we also count the numbers in our minds in ascending order. However, in the case of having some best effort uh, streams activated at the same time, at time zero, and if we assume that these best effort frames uh, or streams might have deadlines, there is a high chance of losing the deadlines of best effort frames because uh, what we ob observed was that if we pack all the stiff frames close to the beginning of the schedule window, the, uh, the deadline miss of best default streams is most probable. Uh, then we try to look for other objective functions uh, to improve the quality of service of best default. So what if we try to send the ST frames as late as possible before their deadlines? Or in other words, what if we try to pack all the ST frames close to their deadlines or sparsif sparsify the frames of each SC stream in order to generate some slack spaces between them to allow us to send uh, best default streams. To clarify this, let's assume that we have a best default stream with three times larger transmission time than our uh, stream 1 and 2, which are of type SD. And the period of the BE stream is equal to frame A's period, which is three time units. And based on our three different uh, schedules for the SD traffic, based on our three different objective functions, uh, we can see that we can have three different patterns to transmit our B stream. Uh, however, in case of uh, minimizing the offsets, we have observed the only case of deadline miss for best default streams uh, because we have packed all the SD streams close to. Uh, the beginning of the schedules, the, then the BE stream is pushed uh, somehow further in the schedule and is going to miss its deadline. But if we try to maximize the offsets while keeping the constraints uh, for scheduling as dissatisfiable, we can see that there has been no case of deadline miss for best default. Also, if we try to sparsify the SD schedules for frame A and B, we can have satisfiable uh, schedule also for rest default in which it also meets its deadline. And as we saw in this example, 
uh, we try to activate Bestiport exactly at time zero to generate the worst case response time of Bestiport. But we changed the offset of the ST frames so that we could decrease the interference of ST with uh, the Bestiport streams. And here in this slide, we show the system model and the modifications which were needed to be done to achieve the new objective functions. In case of maximization objective function, no, uh, no parameters in the system model were required because we just simply uh, set the maximization of the offsets in the optimization prover that we were using. But in case of sparsification of ST schedules, we needed this modification. So S high indicates a stream, and if the stream size exceeds a full frame size, it might be uh, consisting of multiple frames. And one of the hops uh, within the path of the stream is indicated with VA to VB. We have V, which is the offset of the frame, uh, the start tr uh, of transmission of the frame, and the transmission time of the frame. And the period of the frame, which equals to the period of its parent stream. And then we have the next period or implicit deadline of the stream. In case of sparsifying the schedules, we need to define some slack spaces after each frame. So in this figure on right, we can see that there are two frames. Frame 1, 1 belongs to stream 1 and frame 2, 1 belongs to stream 2. And we have defined a slack space after each of these frames. So the sum of these slacks need to be uh, optimized in our objective function. So besides finding the offset of the frames, we are going to maximize the sum of slack spaces on the schedule window. Also, we need to add the effect of slacks to the existing link constraint. In the link constraint, we selected the offset of a subsequent hop of a frame uh, from a range of values uh, which were after the completion time of the frame at its previous uh, hop. However, in the case of uh, having pairs links or adding the effect of slacks, we need to select the offset value in the subsequent hop after the slack space is completed. Then after this time, we can select the next hop of the next offset of the frame at the next hop. And the size of the slack should be selected in a way that the uh, slack sp space will not cause uh, interference with the next period instance of the frame. Also, the sum of all the slacks on a link must not exceed the hyper period, uh, which is our schedule window. And the equal slack constraint, which is an optional constraint, enables us to force the size of slacks to be equal on the link. And here we can see all the expressions of the extra constraints and also the uh, modification on an existing constraints in mathematical expression form. And this slide shows the evaluation setup. So we have chosen two metrics as to quantify the quality of service of best default streams. The first one is the number of deadline misses and the second one is the amount of end-to-end -end delay occurred to HPE stream. And we have chosen the simulation-based evaluation approach because the lack of uh, BE support in the existing TSN schedulability analysis. And based on the framework that we have, uh, we uh, extracted the end-to-end -end and deadline misses from the nesting simulation framework. And here in this slide, we are uh, presenting the traffic generation approach. So we are going, we have a random source and station uh, which uh, transmits data to a different random destination and station. We have a fixed number of uh, streams, which is uh, specified to be uh, 10 streams. We have three different uh, strategies to distribute class types among these 10 streams. 80% probability to have SD type and 20% to have BE type. Then the scenario two is to have 60% probability of ST streams among the 10 streams and then 40% uh, probability of having BE and then scenario 3 is a 50-50 chance of having SD and BE among the 10 streams. And the size of the streams is uh, a fixed size equal to a full frame size 
Then the random periods were selected from an automotive benchmark, from a uh, set of uh, fixed values. And finally, in all of the streams, the deadline is equal to the next period activation of the stream. After preparing the traffic scenarios, we need to insert them to uh, objective functions to generate different schedules based on them. So we have implemented the constraints and the objective functions in the Z3 satisfiability modulo theorem prover and uh, generated the schedules based on each of the objective functions. And the first metric to compare the objective functions uh, from each other is the time it takes to generate a schedule. Afterwards, after we have the schedules prepared, we need to build the network based on simulations. We use nesting simulation framework and then uh, configure the network uh, based on the SD schedules. Uh, so we needed to basically configure the offsets of the streams and as well the gate states. So after running the simulations and injecting the best default uh, scenarios to the schedules, we uh, measured the number of deadline misses and also the maximum end-to-end -end delay. And this is uh, repeated for each of the scenarios. So as I said earlier, we have 10 iterations for each traffic generation, traffic scenario. So in this graph, we are showing the set of maximum BE end-to-end -end delays for each of the scenarios. So we have some, uh, we can see that, for example, for maximization, we have 10 cases of uh, stream scenarios. So we have 10 values and we are showing the range of maximum end-to-end -end delay, delays at each of uh, at these scenarios. So we can see that maximization has, uh, most, in most of the time, the least maximum end-to-end -end delay, uh, end -end delay. And also the minimization, uh, in contrast, has been the worst uh, in terms of the maximum end-to-end -end delays. And the proposed even and sparse objective functions can be seen that are somehow moderate between maximization and minimization. And then in terms of the number of deadline misses, we can see that in each of the scenarios, minimization has shown the maximum uh, number of deadline misses. Uh, although in scenario three, we did not observe any uh, deadline misses, but in the first and second scenario, uh, we can see that minimization has been the worst case and maximization also in scenario two shows lots of number of deadline misses, but sparse and evenly sparse have been the best uh, objective functions in terms of deadline misses. And then we come to the average uh, schedule generation time and we can see that maximization and minimization objective functions have higher computation time in comparison to the even and sparse objective functions. So now based on the simulation evaluations we can state that the schedules that we have generated for SD traffics, the hard real-time traffics, can also affect the quality of service for best default traffic. And in this work, we changed the strategies to generate the hard real-time SD traffic schedules so that we could improve the quality of service for best default traffic in terms of the maximum end-to-end -end delays and the number of deadline misses for the BE. And we proved also that sparsification of the schedules could also generate SD schedules faster than the packing approaches like maximization and minimization. But we consider using this simulation approach for evaluation of our work as a drawback. And we target using schedulability analysis for TSN in our future works to investigate more on the quality of service of best effort. Unfortunately, the existing schedulability analysis for TSN does not support BE, so one of our future tasks will be to develop this uh, schedulability analysis for TSN with the support for best deport traffic. So in the end of my presentation, I would like to thank you for paying attention to this presentation. In case of any questions, I would be glad to answer them after the talk in the conference. You can also contact me with the email as seen in the slide. Thank you very much.